everyone, I'm Holly, and today I'm making the Beesiest of Knees soap. And this is a scent similar to a duplication of type of Honey I Wash the Kids. And so it's just a real smooth, sweet honey porridge. I'll put the full description out there for you. Anyway, I love it. My customers love it. And it's another one I've needed to get remade. So this is a little bit different today. Normally, I put goat milk and buttermilk in it and honey. Well, I did not have any liquid goat milk or buttermilk, so I prepped my batches yesterday with the thought process that I was going to use powders. Well, I got a wild hair and my husband ran over to the health food store today and picked up a, you know, a, a I don't know, an order where you ordered online and then just pick up. And so I was all excited and then I didn't get the goat milk. And then I came back and looked at my resume and thought, well, I couldn't have done it that way anyway because I'd already pe prepped my lye solution. So what I did was I took my goat milk powder because I didn't have the goat milk, but I did have buttermilk and mixed it with the buttermilk. And I also have some water and my honey in here. So it's a little bit reduced compared to usual, but it will still be delightful. I'm still going to pack a punch. So we want to get this blended in nicely to the base oils. I'm straining my lye solutions today, so I've already used this. My lye solution was made up yesterday and it is reduced for the honey and the water to mix with the honey and the in the milks and all the things so it developed a bit of a crunchy top and I have decided to strain that out today if it was fresh it would blend right in no problem but when it's a day old and a little bit crunchy sometimes it doesn't blend up super well so I'm just gonna strain that out and as you can see it's not that much And now we're going to get this blended up. So I've discovered that when I work with these bigger batches, the stick blender really needs the help of the spatula to move it around and I get it emulsified much quicker. And I think sometimes in the past why I've had issues with acceleration is just because I'm blending it too much. So it definitely helped to get this big spatula involved. So now I'm going to put in the fragrance oil. So good. Just gonna blend that up just a titch. I don't want this to accelerate on me, but I also need it to blend up just a bit just to make sure. All right, so I have a few pitchers here and I'm going to go ahead and pour, let's see, I'll go to about, oh my word, forgot how heavy this pot was. Let's see, let's go about 3,000 ml. So I probably could have just used a different pitcher, but oh well. I went a little bit 
higher on that one. This is going to be an in the pot swirl situation into this pitcher I'm putting in copper mica. I'm going to put sparkle gold into this pitcher. and honey blush into this one. I use colors almost exclusively from Nurture Soap. They're just my favorite. So we're gonna give these just a bit of a blend. gorgeous looking amazing all right so there's not a whole lot of soap left down in here this is thickening up so let's see I'm going to start here and put it all in this is going to be a, a fairly concentrated I'm going to leave some for the top be a fairly concentrated swirl situation. Let's see, let's do, I'm going to do a little there, a little there. And then I'm going to put the other right here it's getting thick but that's gonna make a really nice design okay so I'm just going to pour in one spot for now whoa I'm gonna kind of move it around a bit just because some of that color is getting concentrated oh yeah that is looking quite beautiful I think I'm going to just leave this top drizzly because it's a honey themed situation. So I think we'll just do this. And I think that's going to look really fun in the finished bar. 
So just clean up a little bit. And I will just lightly cover this because it has the honey. It may try to overheat, plus it's warm up here anyway. So I don't want to push it to get too warm. Okay, so here we have the beesiest of knees soap. And I'll try to remember to tell you why it's named that in the cutting portion. All right, I'll see you here in a little bit. So I'm in the process of cutting this, the measiest of knees soap. The drizzle on top turned out great. The colors are perfect. The swirl I love turned out so good. This is a very hard batch of soap for the loaves that I have left behind. So I have to put a little elbow grease in. It just turned out so fun. I'm loving it. Loving it. Let me put that there, I guess. And I noticed that because the bars are so hard, I'm struggling a little bit and kind of wobbling a bit. So I'm not getting the best cuts ever, but we will bevel and plane and all will be well. Just had to take a pause there. I was looking out the uh, monitors and I saw something out on the road. Went, what in the world? Turns out it was UPS and we have a fairly long driveway situation and he was just walking up. Oh, we have signs all over to leave packages at the garage. We don't want them on our front porch. And so he was just walking straight through the yard ignoring all the signs. I think my husband <laughs> diverted him but nobody pays attention to the signs and the worst ones are Amazon delivery drivers they just don't get it and one time uh, my husband was out working and somebody still came to deliver to the front door and my husband said please deliver to the garage there's uh any pointed and she's like oh you have signs yup Fancy metal ones even that have all the logos. They just don't get it and they won't do it. They just won't do it. It's just a lot of extra work. We stage everything into our garage. And so it works best for us to have things at the garage. Because it's, it's all business stuff anyway. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, with COVID and everything... We've just been trying to keep people off our porches and let us have our space who has not been intruded upon to go out and be with the dogs, etc. But it's nearly 100 degrees today, so why they wouldn't want to drive up the driveway, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> I was, I saw them and I'm like texting my husband. I'm like, oh my goodness, here comes UPS. What is happening down there? Oh golly, our mailman is awesome. Our mail people get it. They just get it. But I think that UPS and FedEx, they change drivers too much on our route. When we first moved here, we had the same driver every single day. We formed a relationship with him, you know. My husband did, because I'm, I'm actually so introverted that I'm very antisocial. If I see somebody coming, even a neighbor, I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm one of those people. So, anyway. Um, but he knew what we liked, and we knew what we could do to make his life easier when he delivered to us. Oh my goodness, how cool is this? So I'm going to try and see if it'll focus. Do you see that? That is so cool. I love it. Oh, it smells amazing. I love this soap and I just, it's not one that I think of a lot. And so usually my customers that love it have to say, are you going to make that again? Oh, I was supposed to tell you a story. Anyway, the beesiest of knees, nothing too exciting. I was 
I follow Zachary Levi. He was the one who played Chuck and Shazam and stuff like that. And um, anyway, he saw something one day and he's like, that's not just the bee's knees. That's the beesiest of knees. I don't know, it just kind of stuck with me. So that's what this soap was called. We are not supposed to use the same names as what these products are like dupes of. So I try to come up with something unique every now and again. So there we have the beesiest of knees soap, a nice big tray. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. I have to shift it this way because I want this side sticking out of my curing rack.